Motherfuckers always asking me, hood, you a big boy, where you get your confidence from? I be like, I caught it on set at the 99 cent store, motherfucker. Y'all ready to slide into some of these hood facts? Hey, what's up, hood folks? How y'all doing today? This is Jeremy. So, check this out. Do you remember back in like 2007 and 2006, before Facebook was popping off and Twitter was popping off, People used to send these four messages through the text messages like, you know, send this message to 10 people and you'll get blessed with money. You'll get blessed with cars. Or oh, they used to send you those prayers and you had to forward them to like 10 different people. I used to hate those messages. And when people used to send that shit to me, I used to cuss them out or whatever. But I remember one day I got a message, a text message from somebody <clears throat> and it said, never leave the one that you love for the one that you like because the one that you like will leave you for the one that they love let me say it again the text message said never leave the one that you love for the one that you like because the one that you like is gonna leave you for the one that you love and out of all the messages I got through the text messages even in 2016 that one text message has stuck to me the most that has stuck to me more than anything I have ever read. I still st I still hold that in my heart today. Because what that pretty much means is if you're in love with somebody, then you meet somebody, you think, you know, you you are infatuated by them, they they got some good sex, and you lusting after them, and you dump your girlfriend or boyfriend to be with this person, and then after a while, they gonna end up meeting somebody and fall in love, and they gonna end up dumping your ass and you gonna be hurt. So, I know you're asking, Jeremy, where the hell are you going with this? I got an email from one of my hood folks that told me to do a video like this. Let me get my glasses so I can read it to y'all. <clears throat> I feel like an old granddaddy. Son, sit down. Granddaddy finna read you a story. And I'd like you to read you a story. I'm going to put you out, son, because you're making too much noise. <laughs> anyway, so my friend, I don't know, dude, she want me to call her name. I, you know, because I don't want to call people names. Okay, I'm going to call my friend Pearl Shea. So my friend Pearl Shea <laughs> said, Jeremy, could you do a video about people who cheat with somebody and then are devastated when it happens to them? Quick story. I had a friend that was with a guy. She was happy. From the looks of things, both of them were happy. One last year, one day last year, my friend posted on Facebook that her man was cheating on her with another woman. She even posted a picture of his car outside this woman's house. Fast forward, this guy is not this guy is now with the woman he cheated with. This chick thinks she has struck gold. We seriously think that she doesn't believe the same way you got him is how you lose him. I get so tired of hearing shit like that. And that's my hood fact for the day. If you stole them, somebody going to steal them from you. You know, I find it real funny that a lot of times people can be single and then somebody else's husband and wife will come along and they'll think that God sent them this man, God sent them this woman. That ain't true. God ain't sending you nobody else, man or woman. I'm being straight up with you on that. You know, I'm going to tell y'all a couple of stories to prove my point. And I'm going to just tell you how I really feel about this subject. If you call yourself to steal somebody else, woman, or man, it ain't going to work out. It is not going to work out. So, back in um, 2005, when I worked at the dating service, I had a, um, I had this friend. Damn, but see, I can't tell my stories without pe saying people real names. So, I'm going to have to say my co-worker. So, I had three people that worked with me. It was a boy and a girl. And another girl, but this other girl, she was in my training class, so we became cool associates. But there was another born girl working at the same company, and they was already there working before we got there. <clears throat> anyway, so my uh, co-worker, my co-worker is the one that's going to, I'm going to call the girl that was in my training class my co-worker. Even though all, all three of them was my co-worker, the girl in my training class is going to be my co-worker, okay? Follow me. So my co-worker... She, we went through training and we got out on the floor, started taking our calls for the job that I hate. Thank you for calling. My name is Jeremy. I fucking hate you. <laughs> anyway, so she saw that this boy and this girl was together in a relationship. They used to argue at work sometimes, but they still were a couple. 
So I guess she was super attracted to the dude. So my coworker started flirting with the boy. She started talking to the boy. And then eventually they started having sex. Now she used to brag about the fact that, you know, <clears throat> Jeremy, I got this bitch. I got this bitch man all over me. I got this bitch man. He want me and whatever. And so she used to be picking with the girl at work. She used to talk shit to the girl at work. And she eventually got the girl fired. And I thought that was kind of fucked up though, but she got the girl fired. <clears throat> All right, fast forward. So now my coworker and the boy, they work together and the girl, a, a girlfriend, she gone and the boy then broke up with the girlfriend, dumped the girlfriend for my coworker. You follow? Okay, so as time progressed, the boy had told my coworker that, you know, my family got this big lawsuit settlement and we finna come into a lot of money. So my coworkers be like, shit, Jerry, but I'm just gonna work here and we gonna get this money from this family. We gonna get a nice house. We gonna live happily ever after, you know, technically. And so eventually over time, the boy ended up getting fired from our job too. So now my coworker went from having a boyfriend at work to now he didn't move in with her. He doesn't work anymore, but he leading her on this dream telling her that, you know, I'm going to get this money for my family. So as time progressed, late on in 2005, you know, we still working, we still doing our thing, and they living together. So she started to come to work looking kind of sad. Usually she'd be all bubbly, but now she's starting to come to work looking kind of sad and kind of down on it. And I was like, damn. All right. So people used to tell me, Jeremy, do something fun and say something fun and, you know, to make... Damn, I'm finna say this girl's name. <laughs> Do something funny to make your coworker laugh. Make her happy because she seems sad. And she's just sitting around. You know, if you listen to people, they'll tell you all their business. Swear on everything. So she was sitting around and tell us that, you know, this motherfucker, we worked together. He was doing good when we worked together. But now he sit at home all day. He eat up all my food. He watch my TV. And he don't even work no more. So now I'm struggling with money. I used to have money. I used to have money to buy new clothes and stuff. But now I don't have any money to buy you know, buy stuff because all my money going on paying the bills and he ain't doing shit. And he keep talking about this family lawsuit they finna get. And I'm tired of this. So as time went on, she found out that he was still fucking with his ex, the one that he, she had got fired. And he was messing with other girls. Now, mind you, you know, it was easy to meet girls from where we were working at. <laughs> anyway, so he was cheating on her bad. He was doing her bad. All right. So fast forward to the top of the year, 2006. She uh, found out that her, her debit card, she had called the bank when they, we, were finna, we was about to go out to eat to Wendy's because Wendy's had these new chicken wraps I wanted in 2006. They haven't wanted one of the wraps. So we were finna go out to eat to Wendy's and she said, let me check my bank account and see how much money on it on my account. And this was back in the days when you had to call and put in your number and, and get your bank account. Boy, when that, when that lady got in there, your account balance is negative 600. Woo! She was like, oh my God, it's negative. And so she was sitting at her desk crying. And then she was calling his phone. He would never pick up the phone. She was like, I don't know, I don't know. So she ended up leaving work. She stayed at work two days. She came back to work after two days and she had said, I have not talked to him since Tuesday. He would not answer his phone. His family would not tell me where he's at. And he has got my, he went to my account, got my whole paycheck out and made my account go to the negative. Do y'all remember when, the, well banks probably still do this today, overdraft protection. So he had took all her overdraft, he had went and did her overdraft protection and he had took, her account was in the negative $600. So she was sitting at work crying and crying and crying. So she got to that whole situation, right? Okay. So, come to find out, the dude never had a settlement for his, his family never had a settlement. That was a lie that he told her. Come to find out, he was still fucking with his ex-girlfriend, the one that had, uh, my coworker had took from the beginning. He was still messing around with her, and he had got another girl pregnant. So, the dude had got all her money out of her bank account, made her account go into negative, and skipped town. Now, what, a, what the whole purpose of that story was to say that, in the end, she ended up losing a lot of money. She ended up almost losing her apartment. She lost her car and she lost her so-called man because the man ended up dumping her, playing her, using her, dumping her ass and going with another woman and getting her pregnant. So my coworker, you know, she's to come to work sad all the time. She wanted somebody to feel sorry for her. And then y'all know my personality. People always wanted me to crack some jokes, be funny, but I couldn't because it was bullshit. That was she get because the purpose of this video is my, my friend Pearl Shay said that her friend, her uh, friend got a, was with a man and the woman, another woman came along and stole her friend man and she think that's how it's gonna be. 
That's not how it's gonna be. You're not gonna steal somebody's husband. You're not gonna steal somebody's wife and y'all gonna live happily ever after. I look at Alicia Keys. Y'all know before Alicia Keys got with Swiss Beats, her music to me was good. You know, she was doing some good music. I like the Alicia Keys music. But when she stole Swiss Beats from that woman, it's like her music is straight garbage. Her music is whack to me. All this on We Are The World, Let's Build The Earth. I don't wanna hear that bullshit. Her music is garbage. I listened to her new CD she just put out back here a couple weeks ago. I don't want to hear that bullshit. Skip next. It just seems like ever since Alicia Keys got with that married man and took that married man from that woman, that her life, her music, I can't say her life because I don't know her life, but her music and her career just ain't been popping out no more. Is it just me? In the last of 2006, I was dating someone and I treated them like shit, bullshit. I mean, cheating and all this shit. So I met somebody in 2007. They played my ass like a motherfucking fiddle. And that's why I told y'all in my Dallas story why I went through a, a, play, a phase in life where I almost lost my apartment. Where I got played. Because it happened to me. It happened personally to me. It's not going to happen. And I hate the fact when people are like, Jeremy, you don't know what you're talking about. I've been with my man for 12 years. He left his wife with me. That's okay. That's okay. Because if you do get in a relationship with somebody and you think it's going to last, because it ain't, it's going to get to the point where you texting them because you don't trust them. You call them every few minutes because you don't trust them. Babe, I'm finna go to the gym. I'll be back in an hour. So the whole time you on your phone, Hey, that's a dumb shit. But baby, do you want brown rice or white rice with your dinner tonight? Baby, do you, have you seen the new episode of Empire yet? You know you're going to be asking bullshit just so he can reply back to you. Just so she can reply back to you to make sure that they ain't cheating. And this is the killer of the killer. Y'all, people are not cheating no more like they used to cheat. You remember back in the day when you would cheat with somebody, you would have to go and get a motel room or go somewhere off and go to somebody's house and cheat and it take two or three hours or you spend the night. That shit ain't happening no more nowadays. You can go on these little apps, you can meet somebody, credit list and all this shit and meet somebody, go over to the, and you go on lunch at one o'clock, right? Go to the house at one o'clock. And then get through and bang, bang, bang. Uh, uh, uh. I'm, uh, I'm at the door, knock, knock. You know, do all that shit. And in 10 minutes, you can be in half six and gone. So, my purpose of this whole video is to let you know that how you steal somebody's husband, how you steal somebody's wife, that's how it's going to happen back to you. If somebody gonna come in and take your husband, take your wife the same way. You might be the sexy, you know, you, I'm sexy. I got a six pack, I'm cute, I got a nice everything. And then you got that right now, and then years down the line, he or she gonna meet somebody else with the same credentials, and they gonna take them from you. You don't gotta listen to what I gotta say. You don't gotta listen to this hood facts today. You don't gotta pay this shit no attention. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I know this for a fact here right here. <clears throat> could never be happy with somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. You never gonna trust them. You will never trust them. You will never trust them. You will never trust them. You will never. It ain't never worse than being in, being in a relationship with somebody, calling yourself in love with them, but the whole time you feel like that they cheating on you, the whole time you feel like they got somebody else, the whole time you feel like, oh, he gonna leave me like he left his girl. She gonna leave me like she did her dude. It'll make you feel bad inside. That shit will make you feel horrible inside. It really will. My friend Pearl Shea, who wrote me this email, thank you for the email. Just tell your friend, the one that her husband left her for another woman, don't even worry. Don't take him back. If he ever try to come back, don't take him back. Because all he gonna do is stay with her until he get bored with her. And he gonna start cheating on her, doing her bad. And she ain't gonna never trust him. Believe me, she can put on that front all she want. That that's my man. I stole him from her. She'll never trust him. If he go out to the club tonight, she gonna be on the phone the whole time. Hey, baby, where you at? You having fun? All them bogus text messages. She'll never trust him at all. She'll never trust him. And this is my piece of advice for people who are single and lonely and want somebody. Never start a relationship with somebody who is in one already. Always start a relationship with a fresh person who is single. If you meet somebody and he said, oh, me and my wife, we going through a divorce, we finna get a divorce. Wait till the divorce is final and they ain't with each other no more and then start the relationship. And remember, you will never be the main course if you always start off as the side dish.